the five things that need to be present for you to be able to communicate on all six levels. And the first is the right tone. Um, uh, everything that you say in marriage has to have the right tone. So let me say the same thing three ways, okay? And just see if it means something different to you uh, in the way that I'm saying it. So I'm gonna say, okay, I understand, I'll do it, okay? So, so Karen says something to me and I say, okay, I understand, I'll do it. Karen says something to me and I say, okay, I understand, I'll do it. Karen says something to me and I say, okay, I understand, I'll do it. Does that mean something different? <laughs> tone is everything in communication. First of all, tone tells you if I care or not. Let me tell you something, it is impossible to communicate with a person who doesn't care. Have you ever been at a restaurant and you're being waited on by a waiter or waitress and they don't want to do, they don't want to wait on you? That's what many marriages are like. You just don't care. It, empathy is the feature of all new relationships when you fall in love. Empathy means putting yourself in another person's place. An example, Karen and I, our first date, 19 in 1969, I think it was. Uh, and I picked her up in my 1964 Dynamic 88 Oldsmobile. <laughs> and I, I drove so carefully. Uh, I mean, I was, because I, I didn't want to bother her. I didn't want her to be afraid or anything. So I was so careful in the way that I drove and you fast forward three or four years later, I drove like a wild man. And she would say, Jimmy, slow down. And I would say, there's nothing wrong with the way I'm driving. You know, the difference was I didn't care. <laughs> when you're speaking to your spouse, you know if they care or not. You know if they care because of the tongue. You know, you just tell. So Karen, I've been married 45 years. We know each other's tongue. And I watch my tongue. I know good and well when I'm talking to Karen, it's not just what I'm saying, but the way I'm saying it communicates whether I care or not. The other thing about tone is it's encrypted, whether we realize it or not. The number one need that a man has is respect. Number one, that's our mega need. The number one need that women have is security. So you have to understand when you're talking to a woman, the tone of what you're saying has to communicate to her, you're first. Uh, you're, not, you're not a burden to me. If I need to say no to something else, that's no problem to me, but I won't say no to you. I'll, I'll do anything to meet your needs. And so just, what, what is it that you want? Rather than a tone that says, what do you want? I, I'm busy watching football. What do you want? <laughs> and to let her know she's not on your heart, that she is a distraction, and that you're frustrated. So every time you're communicating with a woman, Every, it's not what you're saying, it's the way you're saying it. It has to be encrypted with security or it's gonna make her feel upset and insecure. Not, not because she's an insecure person, but because she looks to you as a source of security in her life. Now this is also true of daughters, uh, little girls. When you're talking to a little girl, you have to talk to her the same way. For men, the honor is our number one need. So when you're talking to your husband, the tone of what you're saying to him has to say, I respect you and I believe in you. I believe that you're a good man and I trust you. And it's not what you're saying, it's the way you're saying it. To a man, the way you say it is as important as what you say. And so this is also true of little boys. L little boys are just little, you know, little men. And when you're talking to a little boy or son, if you humiliate him or talk down to him, it, it upsets him. It's gonna be hard to communicate. So when we're, when we're communicating, the number one thing, the number one thing when you're communicating is watching your tongue and making sure of two things. You know I care and I'm encrypting this in your language. You don't need what I need, I don't need what you need, but I'm making sure that I'm talking to you in your language. I'm saying just that point right there will help you to communicate. Number two, uh, element in good communication is enough time. Is it, this is a huge thing, obviously, is enough time. Because you're my partner, I need to talk to you about the things that we're partnering in. The third is conflict resolution. Now, you'll hear me say this again, but it's no big deal if you fight. The good marriages, they're, they fight, okay? So the goal of your marriage isn't to fight. The goal of your marriage is to resolve conflict. 
So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be afraid of conflict. Now, if you don't know how to communicate, you probably are afraid of it. And if you came out of a home where your parents divorced, children of divorce fear conflict more because they fear it's going to end the marriage. But it shouldn't. Good marriages have conflict, but conflict resolution is one of the reasons that we communicate. And I'm going to be very specific about this. So I want to talk about three different types of communication and the time that goes with it. The first is proactive communication time. I'm talking about face-to-face -face quality time, an hour a day when you're going to talk. Now, Karen and I, uh, when the weather's good, we'll sit on our back porch. We love to sit on the back porch and talk. And my commitment is to talk to her as long as she needs to talk. But walking in the mornings, just make it a habit. Walking in the mornings, um, you know, just finding a time in the evenings when the kids are in bed, whatever your best time is. But I'm going to say something to you. If you can't find an hour a day to talk, you're too busy. And you need to find another area to cut back in, not your marriage. 